وسلاۃ وسلام علی اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین و اعلیٰ علیہ وصاب اجمعین اما بعد فعوض اللہ من شیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم All, pra- all praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of heaven and earth and everything that exists. And may his everlasting peace and blessings be upon his greatest creation and our master Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. First of all, just to um, know who I'm talking to, I want everybody who's married to put your hands up. MashaAllah. And now all the ones are single to put your hands up. And all those who want to be single. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Marriage is a wonderful institution. Absolutely heavenly if it's perfect and if it's good. A good marriage is heaven and a bad marriage is hell. It really is hell. But If you have a good foundation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran of his signs is that he created for you, from yourselves, mates that you may find tranquility in them. And he placed between you affection and mercy. Indeed, in that are signs for the people who give thought. There is love. Love is the most powerful emotion there is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, he is love himself, he created you from love. Then he created a, a partner from you. And it's something as Adam Adam al-Islam felt alone, even in, in spite of having everything in Jannah. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places love in the heart. It, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, it, it completes half your iman. A person doesn't matter how it sets the demons to rest. It's one of them things you have to do. People put it off, put it off, but it's always niggling at their mind. That's why people, they get so agitated because they want to get married, get want to get married. It will happen, inshallah. But it's innate to find a partner. But how should one go about it? The first thing you should do you should seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help. And we're told, you know, Salat al-Istahara is a wonderful, beautiful tool that we don't use it often enough. Use Salat al-Istahara. Seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And use Salat al haja It's a wonderful gift. When you embark on, on your journey, Make sure the onset, the offset, the beginning, it's good. And inshallah, then you will have the blessings and it will end up good as well. You should not have this fairy tale. In what I say to people, a lot of the English people, what I say to them is, get married quickly in your relationships. People come to my shop, I have a business. And I see couples, and I can tell, you can instantly tell the married ones from the, the courting ones. It's something, the chemistry, that they, the way they behave. And I'll ask them how long you've been together. And they'll say, five years, four years, three years, ten years. And I say, what are you waiting for? Did you know scientifically, scientifically, when you meet someone, instantly, in the first ten seconds, you know whether you like someone or not. Instantly. You just know. When I got married, I spoke to my wife for 10 minutes. That was it. I didn't know who she was, what thing, you know, all I had was... And then, for them 10 minutes, I had to fight for that. And within Sharia, that is allowed. But they would not let me speak to her. I saw her, she brought some tea, and they said, that was it. I said, well, I need to speak to her. They said, no, you can't. She says, what do you mean you can't speak to her? I want to speak to her. If I'm going to marry someone for the rest of my life, I need to speak to her. No, you can't. I says, why not? They said, well, what if you don't marry her? Then it's disrespectful. I says, well, no, but but I says, look, then I says, all right, you can... I says, just... And what they came to a compromise. We said, let me just go into that room and we'll leave the door open. And you can all not be here, just leave the door open. I said, fine. 
And she was sat in the far corner, and I walked into the room, I was in this corner. And what do you ask somebody? What do you, what do you, what do you ask a total stranger? So first thing I asked was, I said, how, how much education you got? When she came out with all these titles, I thought, wow, she's more educated than me. That's not a good sign. <laughs> and then I asked her, I says, how religious are you? She says, well, I'm not fanatical, but I finished the Quran in Ramadan. That's the first thing she said to me. I thought, somebody who re finishes the Quran every Ramadan can't be a bad person. They have the fear of Allah or the hub of Allah in them. And she asked me, she says, how much education do you have? I said, I'm not very clever, I've got no education. She says, do you have a girlfriend? And I said, no. She says, did you have a girlfriend? I said, yes. She says, how do I know you're not going to go back to her? I said, I said, you don't spit something. It came back up after you spat it out. I said, I'm not going back. And believe me, she says, that's the one quality that I liked in you, that, that you did not lie to me. The fact that you owned up and said you had a relationship and you could have hid that and lied to me. She says, that was the one single thing that I liked, your honesty from the day one. And two weeks later, I was married. And 25 years later, it was the best thing I did. So what I'm trying to say to you is, in relationships, what people do, they have this fairy tale imagination. And let me also tell you, there's nothing better than whining and dining and romancing. Marriage itself is a reality. It's paying the bills and washing the underpants and you know, it's just mundane, it's hard. But what the reason why a lot of marriages fail is because they do the fun things later, earlier, and then they get married. And this is what I explained to the English people as well. I say to them, look, while you're enjoying yourself, and then when the relationship is coming to a, coming to a dead end, it's peaked, and then they get cold feet, and they get panicky, and they say, ooh, let's get married. And they think the, the marriage proposal then is going to take the relationship to the next level. But what happens is relationships peaked anyway, so now they're getting married, and then the reality sets in, and then they start to take each other for granted, and the woman will say things like, you don't bring me flowers anymore. You know, you don't take me out anymore. You don't buy me gifts anymore. You don't tell me how beautiful I look anymore. And then the relationship then starts to dwindle, and that's why you hear all the time that you know, among celebrities, amongst people in your street, this, the, the couple were together for 10 years, 15 years, they got married, six months later they were divorced. It's because that's why Islam is so beautiful. Islam is so beautiful because it starts from a base that there was no history before. So what happens is the first early days of your marriage, um, they're not wonderful. They're not wonderful. You got a total stranger, what do you talk to them about? You know, first thing I had to do was show my photo family album. So this is my auntie, this is my uncle, this is... Thing. Because she doesn't know your family. But it's awkward moments. There are awkward moments. I tell you, one of the hardest things to do in early, early marriage was trying to sleep. Because all your life you slept on your own. And now there's another person next to you, and you have to get used to sleeping in the bed with that somebody else is there as well. And that's something you have to get used to. Well, there's many times where I've smacked my wife in the face, like, ah, points there. You know, you sleep because you, you're used to, used to sleeping on your own. But what I'm trying to say is, then it gets better. Because Islam teaches you that. Islam says, don't have this notion of that it's going to be hunky-dory, that is going to be, you know, a fairy tale beginning and a fairy tale. It's not like that, right? And then what happens is, you grow to love each other. And Hazrat tells us that also remember two things as well: that a woman wants to be loved. Remember that, 
And a man, if women are listening, sisters are listening, men don't care about love. They might not admit it, or might not want to tell, let the wives know that, but men don't really do not care about love. Men just want to be respected. So if the sisters out there, all they have to do is just respect their husbands, respect their friends, respect their families, and never disrespect them in front of their friends and family. What goes in behind the walls in private is amazing, you know, that's separate. It reminds me of the Vakya where the Prophet and Hazrat Aisha, they were having a domestic between them. And the Prophet said to Aisha, our mother, he said, shall we call in a mediator? And she said, yeah, okay. And then uh, the Prophet said, shall we call Hazrat Umar Farooq? She said, no, no, not him. No. She, and they said, what about Hazrat Abu Bakr Sadiq? She says, yes, my father, he will do. So they called Hazrat Abu Bakr Sadiq and they came in. And the, the Prophet said, who do you want to speak first? And Hazrat Aisha said to the Prophet now you tell them, yeah, but make sure you tell the truth. And Hazrat Abu Bakr Sadiq got really annoyed and he said, oh Aisha, this is the most truthful man who ever walked the planet. And the Prophet said, Oh Abu Bakr, I didn't call you here to shout at your daughter. And then when they left, they came back an hour or so later, and the Prophet and our mother they were eating and talking to each other happily. And the Azad Abu Bakr Sadiq was making a joke of it. And he says, You guys are eating, you never called me, how can you do this? But what I'm trying to say to you is Look at the example of the Rasulullah They were having a domestic. They called in a mediator. And an hour or so later, they were eating and happily talking to each other. Don't take things personal. Don't play mind games. Our people play mind games with each other. Right? Follow the sunnah. Also, um, to complete one's deen by fulfilling the sunnah half of your iman the Prophet ﷺ said is completed when you follow the sunnah to achieve isan by fulfilling natural desires lawfully if you don't you are going to fulfill your desires but you're going to do it unlawfully fulfilling and satisfying the parental instinct in a loving and family environment you know that maternal and paternal instinct that people have. Create a stronger society with high morals. I mean, if you look in this country, it's a beautiful country that we live in. But did you know they got over three million single parent families? And it doesn't make a strong family or a strong society. Because then people are feeling individual, they feel alienated, they have chips on their shoulders, they have that's why there's so much psychological problems. Children need a mother and a father and a loving relationship and a loving home. That's why it's very, very important to love your wife uh, in the respects that then the children will feel loved as well. Some advice by married couples that were married for more than 45 years. To consider your partner as a best friend. The other thing you gotta also remember is, which is a misconception in the West, never marry for love. You say, huh? Never marry for love. Love is a feeling. Love is a feeling and feelings change. Just love the person you're married to. I love my wife because she's my wife. And that won't change. Oh, uh, sister, she should, she should love her husband because that's her husband. Because if you love a person, and it's, that's a feeling, love is a feeling, like Professor Sa was saying the other day, love is a feeling, and feelings change. But we do it with our families. You love your brother because he's your brother. He might be the worst brother in the world. 
absolutely, you, you know, you, but you love him because he's your brother. Right. You do it with your families. You might have the most awful sister in the world, because, but you still love your sister because she's your sister. In the same way, you should just love your wife because she's your wife. She's the mother of your children. And that's why you should love her. Consider your partner as a best friend. What is a friend? Friend is a well-wisher. And trust me, your wives might nag you, but they, they are your best well-wishers. And those men are generally lazy anyway. We need to be told everything. Like your partner as a person. They're not just a chapati maker. <laughs> you might laugh, but we do do that. You know, one night before I got married, you know, a lot of people would give you silly advice. And they said to me, make sure, it doesn't matter what time you get in, she makes fresh roti for you. Make sure you get that done early. You know, in 25 years, I have never, ever asked my wife to get up and make me breakfast, ever. Right? I get up early because I'm a green grocer. I get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning. And even to this day, she'll say, shall I get up and make you something? I said, no, go back to sleep. I wouldn't want, would you, do you want to get up and make somebody a cup of tea at five o'clock in the morning? No, you don't. So why wish something on somebody that you don't want to be on yourself? And all these years, I have never ever asked her to get up and make me, make me anything. I've got my own hands, I can make up and get up and make myself a cup of tea and thing. But as men have this mentality, doesn't matter what time you come in, they'll wake the wife up and convenience her, ruti you binakade. Know? This insaniyat, you know, she's a person. And I've woke up, many times I've woke up in the middle of the night, two o'clock in the morning, my wife's signing my clothes. What are you doing? Oh, well, I knew you needed a jubba in the morning, so I, I couldn't sleep. So I you know, women, you don't know what they go through. And the only reason you sat here, the only reason you sat here is because somebody's taken care of your life, because you have another life. And women can't do that. You know, when my wife goes away anywhere, when I want to go, drop of a heart, even she has to pack my bags for me, she has to get my toothbrush, she has to put, she does everything to the, to the last towel in my bag. But when she has to go away, she has to cook the food for a whole week. This is for Monday, this is for Tuesday, this is for Wednesday, this is for Thursday, and this is for Monday's clothes for the kids, this is for thing, and, and she, everything is, they have to do that before they leave. And what do those men have to do? Nothing. You know, we're lucky if I, we pack our own bags. Right? Love them as a person as well, you know, because they are a human being, they're not your slaves. See, marriage is a long-term commitment. This reminds me, I went to Pakistan once, and I, I this going back about 10, 15 years, and I spoke to my uncle's son, my cousin, and I said, are you happy? He said, boy, I didn't want to get married to her. He said, I didn't fancy her, I didn't like her, I said no, right? she's ugly. Right? He said this, you know, I didn't want to marry her, right? but they forced me. Right? So he says, I went to one day, he says, for about three months I sulked. Right? But then he says, he says something quite profound. He says, but then I realized, because he married within the family, you know, two brothers sort of, they got the kids married. He said, then I realized that if I don't make it work, families are going to fall out. There's going to be a lot of mess. You know, a lot of rich days that he's going to cut and design. And he, and he said, you know what I thought? I made my bed, I want to lie in it. He says, you know, ever since I've been happy. <laughs> ever since he says I've been happy, right? And Alhamdulillah, he's still married, he's got lovely kids and all the rest of it. So what I'm trying to say to you is a state of mind. It is a state of mind. If you see marriage as a long-term commitment, right? You know, use it that way. It doesn't really matter. Hazrat Sahib said many times, you know, sometimes it's nice to go with Hazrat Sahib to marriage because they give you advice, marriage. And they said it doesn't matter. Even if you had the most horrible, horrible marriage in the world, yeah, how long is it for? 20, 25, 30 years, then it's, you, then it's finished. Yeah, people get sent down for longer than that. Yeah, 
So it's not even the end then. You know, then so what I'm trying to say to you, it's never that bad. It's never that bad. So why are you making your own homes miserable? Yeah? So you should be grateful for what you have. Yeah? They do facilitate. And the other thing is, you know, maybe you don't even deserve them. <laughs> right? And the other thing to do is have a laugh together. Really, it, it, laughter is the best medicine, right? Uh, and you know, as the Sahib said, the best Muslims are those are easy going. Easy going. Good communications, right? You gotta understand about women, they have a monthly cycle too. They, they turn into monsters, right? No, but the thing is, sympathize with them. You know, they sympathize. They go through really bad, aching back pains, yeah. yeah. And then you demand the same thing, my routine, you know, where's my routine, where's my thing, and the pose. How do you like it? When you have, you know, as, as I, I tell you something, I'm really bad, because I'm not a very good carer. You know, don't ask, ask me to do some things for you, I will do for you, but don't ask me to massage you, don't ask me to do your kit. I'm not very good at it. But, you know, if I have a little bit cold, my wife is wonderful at caring for me, you know. But what I'm trying to say to you is, it's, it's, you know, they, they, they go through this, they have bad back pains, they have, you know, stomach cramps, they have this, they have hormonal changes, right? And they, they get catty, they get, they cry. You might not have just said anything, they just burst out crying, right? So there's no point, you know, saying... <laughs> no. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say, you've got to sympathize with them. You've got to sympathize with them. When, when the same thing happens to you, when the same thing, when you get a headache, does your wife not sympathize with you? She says, come here, I'll give you a head massage. I'll make you a cup of tea, right? You know, here, take some paracetamol. She gives you all that, right? She'll give you even bring the glass of water for you and paracetamol take it if you've got a headache. And yet we, we seem so disconnected when they complain. It seems unfair, right? You know, and then y y you have to reflect, this is what I'm trying to say, even the, everything kicks off for no reason, little things kick off, and you gotta understand, you know, the, what time the month it is, how they're feeling, you know, and, and reflect upon that. Reflect upon that. And put yourself in their, in their situation. I'll tell you something. I'd absolutely love and buzz off it. You know, if next year, Hazrat Sab said, you know everybody who sat at the calf last year? Well, you look after the house and let the women come in for 10 days. That'd be funny, wouldn't it? Could you imagine those guys all now at home with the kids, right? I have to cook and wash the thingy and put the washing out and bring it and iron it and look after the whole house, go around shopping, and our wives were sat here for 10 days. I was thinking the other day, how many of you guys have phoned home or, got, or communicated with your house? Properly. Every day. No, no. Right. Now, could you imagine? You know, sometimes, I'll tell you something, it's really annoying you when your wife goes out shopping and she's been out for two, three hours. And then you get stuck to wake up. And, <laughs> yeah, and we're away for so long. Yeah. You know, we're away for so long. So, you know, bear with that. Bear with that. You know, Common courtesy, you know, and I'm saying about adabs are everything. People, I can never understand this, this concept. People say, you, what you see is what you get. Eh? What does that mean? You know, what you see is what you get, and it's the, just the way I am, and you shut up and put up. Yeah? I said, no, you're a human being. You're a human being, and that's what, we should understand that more than anything else. If you have an anger issue, well, sort it out. If you have a bad l verbal language, well, sort it out. You know, don't say, I'm, I'm, you know, something about anger, it amazes me. People pride themselves on it. <laughs> People get angry and they say, don't make me angry. <laughs> they, they, they brag about it. They say, you make me angry, right? I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's my father in front of me. I don't care, and, uh, you know, and they, and, and they brag about it and I think, there's nothing to boast about. You know, if you get angry and you cannot see, and you, you know, that is nothing to boast about. So, you know, don't be blunt. Don't blame everybody else. You know, don't belittle and ridicule. And don't patronize. We do that. 
We shouldn't do that. Don't pick on your spouse. You pick on your spouse, and the only one who suffers is you. Because what you do, you eradicate them of their self-confidence. You belittle them, you pick on them, and what you're doing, you're chipping away slowly, slowly, slowly chipping away at their confidence. And if they don't have any confidence, you're the one who suffers. You're the one who suffers. Encourage them to drive. I kid you not, encourage them to drive. If they can drive, it makes half your life so easy. Right? I've, do you know, I've not put one kid into school. In fact, my wife used to say, I know what it feels like to be a single parent family. I don't think I've ever been to a parent family. Uh, parents, uh, I don't even know say that. Parents evening. Right? But what I'm trying to say here is, they free you up to do the work of Deen. Right? Encourage them. Right? If they're coming from abroad, speak to them in English. When I first got married, I said to my wife, do you speak English? She says, yes, well, I'm thinking. I says, yeah, you speak Pakistani English. Yeah. <laughs> but I says, I will speak to you for the first month or so, you will not understand what I'm going on about. But I can't speak my own language because I always start off in Punjabi and then I always finish the question answering the sentence in English, right? And the only way I know Urdu, some Urdu is because we spoke Urdu with the children, which is another good thing. If you have children, right, speak to them in Urdu. What happens is they just learn uh, an extra language just by default. And eventually they will pack that in and they'll speak English only but there still is ingrained in them, right? And then it'll help you to achieve that as well, to maintain, to improve your uh, language as well. So, and do you think is perfectionist behavior? Uh, trust me, you know, Hazrat Sahib once said, you know, they told you about two doctors, um, and they said it was true that they had a case where two doctors woke up in the morning and they were late and they had one little child and the child's in the bathroom, and the male doctor starts brushing his teeth in the kitchen sink because they're in a rush. And the female doctor, she kicks off. And even in my house, my wife will not let me wash my hands in the kitchen sink. If I've gone out to throw the rubbish in the, in the bins, I come back, she'll say, go in the bathroom. I even threw some rubbish, go in the bathroom, you're not washing your hands in here. And I said, well, that's not fair, because you wash your hands in here. You, how do you wash your dishes? <laughs> you know, but she won't let me wash it. And the people have, she's very particular. But what I'm trying to say is, the male doctor was brushing his teeth in the kitchen sink, and the female doctor kicked off. And they had a massive big fight, and Hazrat Saab said they ended up in a divorce. Okay. There's lots and lots of little habits. People don't, some people, you know, your other half might not like you squeezing the toothpaste in the middle. Right? Or men, I mean, it's a disgusting habit, but men urinate standing up and they don't put the seat up. Right? right? You should, as Muslims, we should all sit down. And, you know, um, I did mention this in one of the lectures. If you want to know the effects of standing up and peeing, right, do it while you're naked. Now, there's a reason for that. Go to the toilet, right? and stand up and have a, a pee and be naked. And then you'll see, you'll feel the splashes, little, little splashes that come onto your, uh, on, your, on your skin. So when you go to the, when you stand up and you urinate, you're having little tiny uh, speckles of urine going onto your clothes. Not enough to detect, detect but you are soiling your clothes, right? So sit down, but what I'm trying to say is, Women do, because women have to sit down on, on, on the seat. So when men, when you go in, and then even if they've cleaned it, the, 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 the bacteria, the germs are still there. So what I'm trying to say is, when they complain to you, they have a genuine reason. So listen, you know. Um, so, but don't go over the top. Real wisdom, real wisdom, now remember this, is to overlook the shortcomings of other people. Remember that, right? To overlook 
the shortcomings of other people. Don't kick off because of it. See, but the thing is, Azhar Sahib says, you know, there's two types of people in the world. There's little people and there's big people. Now, I don't mean little people in stature. I'm talking about little people and big people in moral, ethical behaviors. Little people are preoccupied with little things. If they get a, a zit at the end of the nose, it's the end of the world. If they go to somebody's house, they'll say, oh, we're not going to their house. They didn't walk us to the door. Or they didn't give us any biscuits with tea. Right? These are little people. You know, preoccupied with little things. There's bigger things if you rise above that. And I often say is, don't whinge about somebody not walking you to the door. Maybe they didn't, they're not done it through spite. They didn't do it to disrespect you. Maybe they just don't know. Right? In the same way, wisdom is if the shortcomings in your partner to overlook them. To overlook them. And the best way to do that is, to, is through the course of self-purification. Right? I know I personally have benefited immensely right, by doing this. And which is even better, because my wife's on the course, we've better, uh, benefited even more. One of the sunnahs of the Rasulullah and this is another one to take in your marriages, the louder somebody speaks, the more softly you should speak. Because what happens generally, as when a husband and wife have a domestic and they're having an argument, one person just raises the tone of the conversation just a little pitch higher, and then the other one raises it a little bit. And eventually it just comes out, you're screaming at each other. And then, then what happens is when you both realize you think and then one person either smashes something or they walk out of the room. Eh? But what you should do, the louder somebody speaks, the lower you should speak. And it gets to the point where you say, why are you shouting? And then they realize. Right? So try and practice that sunnah of the Rasulullah It's a beautiful sunnah to practice. And maybe, maybe as the Hazrat was saying yesterday, maybe take that one away with you when you go back home. You know about the course of self purification. Um, and if you didn't, you've been listening over the, over the. So, you know, it makes a big, big, big difference in your lives. Uh, to adopt that and you know practically bring it you know it's not just with the masjid here or with the, amongst your friends it's amazing how many two-faced people there is here uh, you know with you it's same with you know it doesn't it defies logic if you think about your wives you know they they dress up to go to a wedding yeah full kick best clothes this that and the other but when you come from home from work they got the you know the you know wall and and not even got any slippers barefoot, just walking in the morning clothes. Yeah, it's the same thing, you know. We come to the majlis here, we act the best of character with our friends, this, that, and the other jolly mood. As soon as we get back home, we got, got a face on again. So, really, uh, this is where it has it benefits you because it, make, it brings a permanent change within yourself. So, if you're not on the course, Get on the course. If nothing else, just save your marriage. Whether you get into Jannah, that's up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but at least you'll have a better marriage. Um, words and actions which destroy a marriage. Words. You know, the people say words, the sticks and stones, right? Something I'd like to tell you, brothers, is you know, when you get married, remember one thing. You are, right? You are the ultimate, supreme court, the highest that it is for her to go. You are the world court, the European human rights, right? Because your wife, for her, she doesn't have any other place, and neither do you want her to. So if your mother has been unjust to her, or they've had a fight, don't come home, even though your, mother, or your, wife, your mother's status is her status. 
But don't come home and say, don't talk about my mum. How dare you talk about my mum? No. If she is not going to tell you, who is she going to talk to? And this is the problem with a lot of marriages, why this goes wrong. When you marry, she comes into your family, the first month or so is hunky-dory. There's bound to be disagreements, bound to be. Now, she, she didn't marry your mother. She didn't marry your father. But what, you know what the mentality is? Our mentality is, there's my mom, there's my dad, do that kidma, I'm going out with the lads. And that's what we do. And that's why your marriage starts to fail. She married you, came into your house, you've gone off to work, she's waiting, when is my husband coming home? When's my husband coming? Because you're, you're her only form of entertainment. Wallah. You know, from the moment you went out, she's thinking, when my husband's coming home? Right? He finishes work at 6 o'clock, he's not home yet. 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and he's not, because he's out with his mates. Right? He's, he's come, finished work, he's gone straight to his mates. And she's still there. You walk in at 12 o'clock, no wonder she's got a face on. And if something's happened in the house, she's waiting for her husband so she can tell him. Now, when you walk in at 12 o'clock, she's already in a bad mood. Right? Where have you been? You say, I don't have to tell you. This is another thing. Us men think that, you know, just because you tell your you, wife where you're going or where you've been, that you're under the thumb now. So you think, I don't want to be under the thumb. So you say, don't tell me where I can go or where I can't go. Yeah? Where you been? What's it got to do with you? Yeah? Bad mentality. Yeah? And now if there's been a domestic, a domestic at home, it's already started off a bad thing. Now it's really going to kick off. She's going to say, your mum said X, Y, don't talk about my mum. But the thing, this is wrong. This is wrong, my dear brothers. Seriously, it's wrong. And this is where a lot of marriages go wrong. Right? If she's got a, if you, if you, if your wife and your mother's had a, you know, domestic or they've had thing, the thing to do is listen, sympathize, listen. And you know, if ever, you know what I've always done? I've listened and I've never said anything wrong, right? And then my wife will say, well, say something. <laughs> and I just total silence. And then I'll say, well, oh, she's my mum, isn't she? She's like that. What can I do? All people are like that. They, they can say and do. If, you, if you're old and you can't say and do what you want, what can you do? Yeah? She's my mum. Yeah? She's like that. She's always been like that. Yeah? You know? Right or wrong, whatever it is. I, I, I can sympathize with you. I've been at the uh, receiving end of it this time. But the thing is, you have to, that's all they want. Your wife, all she wants to do is to, she wants to tell someone. And if she can't tell you, she'll be telling her sister. She can't tell her sister, she'll be telling her own mother. If she can't tell her own mother, she'll be telling her own friend. She, will, she has to tell, she has to confine in someone. So be that person to confine in. Don't lock doors. And you know something? The following day, it amazes me. The best of friends. The following day, my wife's taking my mum to the thing and they're doing shopping and couple and then my mum bought her clothes and she bought her clothes and they're hunky dory. Right? All they need to do is get that off the chest and be that person. Right? Who else is she going to talk to if she's not going to talk to you? Remember that. Tone of voice, body language, read it, facial expressions. You know, at the end of the day, sympathize with them. You know, and that's what it, that's what it is. You know, this says it all. Harsh words make hearts that are soft as silk and hard as rock. You know, the words. Words is all you have. Right? Now, I don't know how much... What time... Is it Nain of Salah time? Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, thank you for li listening. Uh, we've not even got time for um, question and answers. Nobody give me any shout and things. It good shows, doesn't it? You were all engrossed. Right? Uh, I'm so sorry, we have to do things, so there's no even time for questions and answers. I would have liked some feedback and some questions and answers. Uh, I didn't stick to that. <laughs> Inshallah. I'm here if you need any more. Uh, Jazakallah, thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. You know when you were saying that we should talk to our kids in order? Yeah. That was a
Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. 